And we're actually now back here. Stream has come back up again, so uh, apologies for that one. But you are getting to see this grand final. Nothing much actually happened since it actually went down. Still 5 to 6, 13 minutes and, th and 38 seconds into this game so far. So if we want to actually review everything that's happened so far, look at the early game, look at the mid, look at the way the teams have changed. What would be the big summary, Phil? Well, I mean, the summary is that both teams want to play aggressively. Actually, we see uh, Chipper throwing that ultimate out, on, on, not necessarily on Arachna, but trying to take those creep kills out. However, Arachna running right across it for some reason <laughs> and drops her below half health. And the, in literally the, the one second that she was in there, it dropped her to half health. That's, I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, but, you know, th the summary of this game thus far has been aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. It, there's just been so much aggressive play throughout the entire game by both teams. Um, Druids, they definitely had the advantage going into it. Uh, you know, and, and TSOG, they, they've definitely done a great job of coming back. So uh, both teams, I, I would consider this game to be even right now. Uh, the Hellborn team, uh, Druids, they do have a bit of an experienced gold lead. Actually, it looks like we might be seeing some more action as Tempest comes in up here on top. Valkyrie taking quite a bit of damage. Oh! Call of the Valkyrie is going to go off. Going to be able to take out uh, Tempest with her, but, uh, but Hellbringer is going to be able to... Uh, you know, rack up that kill. So uh, a one-for-one one exchange, um, not too bad, uh, considering it is keeping Tempest from uh, from picking up that portal key. And uh, actually, uh, Tempest going for a guardian ring, maybe looking to build a, a mana ring uh, or even ring of the teacher here before the portal key. So that's kind of a, in, an interesting strategy. I don't know why you actually do that, especially with Glacius on the field. But I, I just want to prop out the uh, the fissure that came out from there from Behemoth. You couldn't have locked him in a better position. And back, he did have to take a step back there, but he was dying in the process too. So we just tried to get, uh, bring him down and did so successfully going down with the ship. But uh, just still fantastic support work coming out here. That's a big thing we've seen so far. Chipper now, Invis Rune up on the top now. Look for that initiation. Hellbringer still sitting in the sides here. So Chipper nicely, nicely scouting out around the corner, which I would have expected from him at the moment as uh, Behemoth just regening that mana, hanging on back, waiting for the right right time. And now Chipper actually bumping into Tempest as well as Glacius. Four heroes on the top. They're ready to push. Look for that TP support. And uh, I don't think it's actually coming just yet, but Chipper's waiting there. His ultimate is back up again. Ready to rock and rumble. They're moving themselves down the tower. The Malphus comes down the back of Valkyrie, blowing the fire on the back of him. Arrow flies back up again. Chipper ulti rips him up through the midside, pushing them back now. All four heroes managing to actually retreat though with uh, what a fantastic defense. Scrambling that defense out for the Legions and uh, really... Druids weren't ready for that one. Druids, they, they, had the, they had the numbers to push in there, but just that one invis allowed them to prepare, being ready to go. Oh, what's Shaman doing up there? He's throwing his life away at the moment. Support does come up. Fissure up. Rockets on the back of Glacius. Goes on down. Valkyrie should move himself down into the river. And Demented Shaman, I thought he was throwing his life away, but I think that was possibly the best bait I've seen. Actually, we see some more initiation here at the top river as now Predator going in on Valkyrie. Valkyrie going to use that leap in an excellent position to be, to be able to get out of there. However, that's not going to stop Hellbringer from taking down who was it? I believe it was Demented Shaman. And now Chipper in quite a bit of trouble himself. He's definitely going to be going down. Predator going to be able to use that leap and get the kill on him. So, uh, you know, all together, you know, Drew is doing a really, really good job uh, despite, despite that successful tower defense at the beginning. They're coming right back in here doing a little bit of tower diving, but uh, able to get the kills out and they're going to be able to take this tower down. As we do see the uh, stun arrow come out, however, looks like Predator was able to use that stone hide shortly before it hit, and he's going to be just fine, and they're all going to be able to get out. So uh, overall, very, very good showing from Druids there at the top lane. Yeah, that definitely was, because while all this was actually happening, Pestilence hasn't even moved from that bottom lane, as uh, he's actually going to TP himself back in towards the base as well now, uh, with obviously, uh, we've got Glacius as well as Predator moving on down there. But it's... it's it, it, it is a concern sometimes. Like we, you, you have a, you have a chat to these guys and they go, "Okay, we don't mind heroes dying, especially if we can push another lane." But no other lanes are currently being pushed. No other advantage has been given by this one. They scramble the defense. They tried to bait and tried to get a couple of kills. They did so successfully, but they, it, the battle just ranged on a little bit too long, and Druids just turned it around to their advantage. And that's that's something which we really love seeing in this in this game itself. Is just the shift of balance. It keeps changing. It keeps it keeps being dynamic. Yeah, I mean, looking at the, just take a look at the creep scores right now. We see that um, we have basically four heroes on, on Druid's team that are around the 50 uh, creep kill mark. The only one that's not, I mean, is Glacius, obviously, who's 7 and 9. But uh, even the lowest uh, other than him is that Hellbringer with 43. Uh, meanwhile, there's only three heroes with that, with that near that kind of score. And... Um, both uh, both Predator and Arachna are far and away farming much better than uh, than Pestilence and Valkyrie are. So I mean, they I, I think TSG really needs to take a step back maybe and focus on getting some better creep kills and uh, and, and basically just increasing their farm as they approach the mid game. Yeah, that, that is definitely exactly what they're going to do. Oh, Tempest caught out here. Chip is on top, and the ulti did just rip him down. Now actually, the rocket still firing. It hits the real one. 
out of all three, how could you hit the real one? That's like finding one in a million. And uh, now Tempest can control his illusions, and that's literally all he can do now. <laughs> <laughs> there has been some absolutely great play thus far today. I mean, every time you think somebody's down, they just seem to come back and, and really impress you there. Uh, you know, Hellbringer now taking a look towards uh, towards this bottom area, the bottom rune area. Not sure what he's going to do. I'm not sure if we're going to see any kind of initiation here on Predator, as he actually has the swarm on him now. Looks like Pestilence putting the swarm on him once again. Demented Shaman looking in there to get that entangle off, however, not uh, not being able to, to necessarily get that off, especially when you're playing against a Predator with that stone hide. Although it is physical, I believe. The entangle is physical. Yes. So, uh, so the stone hide not really going to help him there too much. Um, meanwhile, it looks like uh, Behemoth trying to push his top lane, working towards that portal key, not able to get it. Uh, at the same time, Predator maybe looking to initiate here, uh, rather, you know, especially with the uh, with the addition of Arachna to this bottom lane. But um, you know, overall, the game it has had its little spurts of action, but it, for the most part, it seemed to have slowed down quite a bit. It, it has actually slowed down, but you also notice, like we were talking about towers before, we've just lost two. Uh, two of the Hellborn Towers now down. The top tower has been pressured and has been pressured the entire game. And now Malpha's coming off in the middle here. They're pushing the guys back. And uh, big, big use of an ulti from Hellbringer. I know the uh, cooldown isn't that massive, but it's still one of those guys you want to have on there. Uh, I've got a funny feeling that Drew is now scrambling to actually keep control of this map. There was one big thing we heard very, very early out here from T TSG. They said, we want to control this map. Take out those tier 1 towers, move yourself around, keep our boys up, roam ourselves around, and do nothing just roam, keep the lanes pushed, keep the heroes back, and just stop this farm. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's the main reason Tempest actually half came in as well, just to try and give this type, type of counter push. And uh, it was also the push on the bottom lane, but two tier 1 towers going down. We've only lost one here from the Legion side, and the next tower is actually being pressured here on the bottom. Arachna is pushing it down here, while uh, top's being pinged up. It's just Valkyrie moving up there, but they've got to move themselves down, and then comes the Fissure, takes care of the Creep wave. TP support now going back again. Predator going towards the bottom. Arachna TPing up towards the top there. They might have a bit of a crack at Valkyrie, uh, but probably not. He's got, she's she's going to fall back, and uh, everything's going to be hunky-dory for them just there. But just scrambling the defense. Just look to see TS, TSG carrying those um, carrying those homecoming stones around to make sure they can keep those T1 towers up and just basically keep that pressure on, on Druids to make them make the mistakes. Well, I mean, you want to have that map control. I mean, that's, that's what it all comes down to. I mean, just taking a look at some of the ward placements there it is basically we're talking we're looking at minute one type ward places or placement you know what i mean everything yeah. is basically still they're still concerned about rune control they're still concerned about the access to their own jungle um and, and that all makes sense actually we do see some counter warding happening down here as uh, they were able to take out a, uh, a, a ward successfully at the bottom uh, bottom rune but um you know actually we might be seeing uh, some sort of a push here at the uh, at the middle lane, and they could really use that, especially if they were able to take out that. Uh, that they, since they were already able to take out the double top tower. TP. However, we do see double TP coming in. So now four heroes. There. There's the chipper ultimate coming out, making sure that nobody really uh, gets too close to that tower. Um, honestly, you know the the chipper ultimate, one of those ultimates that you can kind of throw away every once in a while. I mean, you talked about the Hellbringer ultimate. You know the cooldown's low, but the cooldown's still a little bit over two and a half minutes for that Hellbringer ultimate. Yeah. You don't want to just waste that chipper ultimate. A little bit different. You talk about 50 second cooldown. I mean, you can kind of throw that one away. Every once in a while, but uh, you know, I was going to say, uh, really poor use, in my opinion, of the Hellbringer ultimate to begin with. I mean, it's still on cooldown now, so if they chose to initiate here at this point, I mean, they would be without that ultimate. Yeah, that, that definitely would. And the the Malva's ulti, like so many people don't realize just how much of a good initiation that actually is. And to be to be without that one, you see that go. And then you go, yes, now we can push. And uh, they haven't actually done the push, but they've literally kept all those lanes back on the opposite side of the river. And uh, there's been very, very few times where TSG have actually had to def actually had to take out a creep wave on their side of the river. It's always coming off differently. Chipper now moving up towards the top here as the top tower actually gets denied. Actually, whoa, what tower was that actually being denied just there? Was that? Uh, that was the bottom tower on Hellborn side. The Hellborn bottom tower. Ah, I thought we already lost that before. Never mind. Meanwhile, back at, back at, back at the ranch. Um, the top, top town actually being pushed here. Valk's up there. Shaman's there. Chipper's there. Behemoth's there. TP support's coming up. They're about to hit that tower. Tempest is the one TPing in there. Tempest still very, very low low level. Level 9. He will have that ultimate. The tower does go down. It does get destroyed by Papa Drake as well. So extra gold goes toward him. I think it's an extra 200, 300 gold for the back of that one too. 8 to 9. All tier 1 towers now down. T 
TP support coming towards that bottom window. She pushed that one out as well. They might catch it off. Pestle and Zoldy come on through. Impal on the back of Predator. Going to try and hold him there. Fidger as well. Look for the arrow to come out as Predator still moving back. The Angie did come off. He is still getting harassed now. And Rockets going off on the side. They bring him down. And of course, Tier 1 Tower not up. And the TP support had to go to the Tier 2 Tower. And Arachna are a long way off there. Couldn't help their teammate. Levels it up once again. Nine apiece. 23 minutes and 33 seconds in. Yeah, and I mean, taking a look at, at what we just saw, we're now with that, uh, with that event just happening, we saw Pestilence pick up that portal key. And Tempest has just picked up his as well. So, we're looking at two teams that are both going to be looking for that initiation. However, I think that if we can get good initiation here on the Legion team, if they can combo that Pestilence stun into the Behemoth Ultimate, you could be looking at a bunch of dead little duckies over there on the Hellborn side. you got to remember the Behemoth Ultimate too. He's going to love it whenever Tempest actually creates his conversions because they all buff it. They buff that damage. And uh, I'm actually very, very concerned. Like, you need to get that Porky off. And that Ultimate from Tempest, I think, is literally going to make, make or break this game if he can get enough heroes in it because the problem is what you got how many stuns coming out from this lineup in fact almost everyone has a stun on the legion side to actually stop him he has to channel that black hole if he gets stunned it's all over it doesn't keep going and uh well everyone comes out of it they'll keep that damage actually pumping off and that's gonna be a big big problem can tempest get that initiation can they get that initial yeah and i mean you, you talk about that like especially when you have a hero like chipper on the opposite team a, t a hero that does not have to be anywhere near the fight in order to stop a Tempest ultimate. I mean, those those just have a massive range. So, you know, as soon as Tempest uses that ultimate, uh, he, he's not moving anywhere. He's not going anywhere. So those rockets are going to mini-stun. And like I said, he doesn't have to be anywhere close to it. And, uh, and and that'll be the end of that ultimate. So Tempest, perhaps, uh, you know, obviously a great initiator, but perhaps not the not the best choice for, for Druids. It'll all depend on on how well uh, Velociraptor is able to pull off some of those ultimates. Yeah, it definitely will be. Because I just noticed on Arachna, we've got a Whispering Helm on Arachna. Now, I'm not a massive fan of this item, especially early game. We are now we are now into a mid game. We have gone past our 20 minute mark here, but Arachna, I don't want to see that until the 40 minute mark. Get your DPS up, make yourself a damage shield. That's what you're meant for. But obviously, short on the farm, it is a cheap item to actually get and keep your life still up. So it does allow you to stay alive during these battles. But there's only so much you can do with it, and it does it doesn't help your team. It keeps you alive a little bit longer, and literally with the amount of DPS that's coming out from this Legion side at the moment, that little bit longer. It's not going to be long. Like, you look at it half a second. And uh, that's not enough time to actually do anything. Ping's going across the middle here as Predator gets done by a massive Valk arrow by the looks of it as well. Rock is flying in the back of that one too. And uh, the, just the smiley face is coming out from the fact that Chipper managed to get that one on the back of Predator. So uh, Predator, not, well, it's, it's, all friendly, it's all friendly banter at the moment. That was pretty much a blind error. I think they saw the, the <laughs> tail end of, of Predator coming in here. But uh, catching him with the, with, the, with the blind error as now they look to make a push at the middle lane. Going to be real interesting to see what happens here. Behemoth, he's actually relatively close to pick on that portal key, or was last time I checked. He's currently sitting at 1,700 gold, so he's getting pretty close, so they don't want to do anything too crazy right here. May even want to concede this, uh, this tier 1 defensive tower in, or in order to save that uh, that gold for for, uh, for Behemoth. They don't want to, you know, obviously sit on his portal key farm, since he's just such he doesn't really have any innate farming ability and uh, and he really is going to be relying on that item. They definitely will. Looks like Predator's actually you want to actually take things into his own hand, coming in with, of course, his buddies, the Illusion Rune, and uh, very very fast out there by Papa Drag jumping on that jumping on that leap thinking about moving on here as uh, Chip is still on the back of not only a it was actually just, it was actually just a buff from from Valk's leap giving him that extra movement speed coming out Predator's only pushing that lane now with his illusions and uh, the rest of the team hanging on back now they're going to move themselves into, Le into the Legion neutrals so now we're going to see both teams seeing if they can actually take the ball by the horns tier 2 tower cloud goes up Chipper wants to try and get on top but he's still actually only attacking the illusions right now bottom tower is actually still uh, down there behemoths down there no TP on the back of him too he does actually have the money now, I do believe, for that port key. Has he actually bought it? Is it actually flying out to him? He still needs uh, 20 more gold. 20 more gold. He's a bounty again. If they pull off this gank, that port key goes back. But there's one, two, three, four heroes all moving down towards it. And now five heroes here for the Hellborn side. He's walking back to actually get it. Of course, by the time he does get there, the uh, standard income will come there. Mm -hmm. Double TP coming towards the bottom. Chipper's down there. We now actually have a triple TP. Val came in. Pestilence came in. They're ready to defend this tower. They're going to need Behemoth back, and uh, it's going to take him a while. Porky Malphus initiation straight on top. Pestilence running back. Wow. The conversion's on the back of him, and Henry actually managed to actually bring down Velociraptor. <laughs> what the? <laughs>
<laughs> did you see how? F uh, apparently, you didn't. I did because, it. Because you're like, what the hell? Wow, Velociraptor, Planet of Tempest. M w I mean, he disintegrated. <laughs> Chipper put that ultimate down on him, and it was just like this. Oh, hey guys, I'm here. Woo and gone. <laughs> And gone. That was just what it was like. I mean, it was just absolutely wow. Tempest disappeared. You know, I mean, they, really, really great ultimate placement thus far from this chipper. I mean, he's put it in places where he can really help to defend towers. He put it in a place where after uh, Pestilence came in and stunned, that basically Pestilence body blocked him, and Tempest had no other option other than to get destroyed while sitting on top of that uh, that chipper ultimate. So. Uh, Chipper being played by Henry D, who played that Pebbles last game, yep. doing an absolutely phenomenal job this game as well. Yeah, that, that definitely is. All these guys, their skill level is just so high. Like I, I can't believe that TSG doesn't have a massive fan base with what they're pulling out at the moment, with what they're managing to do. There, there should be a fan club. Where, where is their fan club? I might actually consider actually starting one up now if a shoutcaster should I think, actually I think be the only, I think the fan club might be located at this table right now. It, it, it is possible. It is actually growing. But, of course, there is a massive fan club for, of course, the Druid boys. They, they're they not out of this. No one's out of this. No one's actually in this just yet. Everything's going both ways. We're just seeing some amazing, amazing Hon play. And now we see initiation from here from Predator using that stone high, trying to uh, make sure he doesn't do anything. There's a pretty good fissure block, uh, not going to be quite enough to keep him in there. Now they might be looking to uh, counter initiate here as both Pestilence and Portal Key do have, or Pestilence and Behemoth both have their Portal Keys. Um, Wow. Valk looks, like, uh, looks like Valk is going to be ulting and, and, uh, and uh, have gonna, they're actually going to use that to get out of there. I thought they might actually use it to initiate. However, uh, probably the better choice. I mean, the, the, you know, the less amount of time you, ha you can uh, fight at an enemy's tower, the better off you are. Yeah. So... And they've gone straight back and farming it, because that was actually a very, very smart move, too. Tempest moved himself inside the trees, was ready to pour key right on top of him. You wouldn't even see him coming in. They had no vision for it. And uh, now the push will come towards that Tier 1 tower. It's down there on the bottom lane. They're rallying behind it at the moment. They're not actually rallying at the tower, which is always a little bit disturbing for them, as uh, War's actually being placed down here. What a fantastic war, just from Glaciers, keeping tabs on what's moving around the back here, so they can actually get this Tier 1 tower with the fewest casualties. In they come. They just drop it from the sky. It is, of course, Tempest coming in. Now Predator jumping across the top of it too. Where's the defense? Now Behemoth. In he comes. Oldies up. Lot is the first one to get the kill, but they're still not quite finished yet. The fidgets are coming off. The tower has gone down. Arachnid killing, killing on the left-hand side. Two down for the other side. Make that three for the Legion side with Behemoth joining the list of the dead here. Chipper's in. Oldie goes up. Malthus comes up. Perfect timing. They waited for that one. Now the Chipper Oldie actually coming up and they're falling the Chipper back. They're still ba coming off the back of it and Pestilence. No mana for a stun. Chipper's got to take that. The slow does come up. Predator getting rocketed. He is on fire. Pushing him back. Chipper's on the back of it. Malvis will come in and make a big buffer. The rocket flying just a little bit higher there. But four heroes, three heroes actually going down for the Legion side. And we did lose two for the Hellborn during that one. But T1 Tower down. That was the goal here for our Legion side of the Druids. You know, I... I don't know if I completely agree with, with them even trying to defend that bottom tower. They knew that the two heroes, that uh, bo both Chipper and uh, I believe it was uh, and Valkyrie had ported back from, from the top lane. So they weren't, you know, they, they still had about a 20 second cooldown left on their TPs. Yeah. And they weren't able to get in there. So honestly, it probably would have been better for them to try to concede, just concede that, that tier one tower and, you know, cut your losses and then make up for, make up for it with a, a team fight when you have your entire team there. Um, on the other hand, they were able to take out, uh, I, I believe Arachna went down. I'm not sure. Maybe she didn't go down. Let me check real quick. Uh, no, I don't think she actually no, stayed up. She, no, I she don't stayed think up. she did. It looks like she did stay up. Um, I mean, so so really the only people who went down were, were Glacius and uh, and uh, Tempest, which, I mean, you'll take that any day to, to get a, a near genocide and a tower kill. Um, but, I mean, like I said, I, I really think that, that there could have been a... I think it would have been smarter for them to just concede that, that tier yeah. one tower. It's, it's, it's one of those times when you go, we, we, can, we can guess it now, but uh, just a little bit of lack of communication. That's the land scene for you, though. It definitely does change the perspective of what's actually happening around you. And uh, it's one of those mistakes. It might cost them a game, but I think it has actually just leveled up both the sides now. We are locked at 12 apiece here, so even though there's been an action-packed game, the kills aren't rolling in. They're, it's literally just been these amazing battles, amazing skill levels coming out. Valk now pushing this top lane as well. One thing we actually haven't looked at her at is of course the massive items coming up here. Valk moving up. Look at Tempest coming straight up there. Massive TP comes straight up there. The, the double stun and Arachna ulti. Valk is going absolutely nowhere. Bar down and uh, great time to pull it up there. The Tempest continuous stun coming off there. Valk thought it was going to be good. Could have TP'd out a little bit faster. Could have actually leaped in a little bit further there. But Papa Dre caught, well not caught napping, but just caught slightly out of position. 
Well, I mean, it, this is this is the the thing that we were talking about before. In fact, they seem to be suffering from the same thing that Druids was last time, where they have. Well, that's going to interrupt you too on the bottom lane. Predators actually trying to have a bit of go here. Shaman and Pestilence, they might get on top. Chippers come in. Demented Shaman's on very very low HP. They try to track him down. He does get the kill, but Predator should sacrifice his life. Rockets flying out, and Henry does actually get the last hit in the back of that one too. So a bit of tip for Tat during that one. He it goes a little bit back from the Val, from the Val kill, but uh, they did actually lose their Demented Shaman during that one too. Sorry. Yeah, and I'm, I'm obvious, you know, in my opinion, that's probably the better takedown. I mean, losing losing Valkyrie and Demented Shaman for for Predator, especially how farm Predator is right now. He's already got the Insanitarius. He already has that Frostburn. So, I mean, he's he's got some pretty pretty big items at this point. Honestly, I think though. Um, this Legion team, as far as team fights is concerned, if they can, like I said, if they can initiate, they probably have the, the you know, a, a little bit of, of a bigger edge on them. Uh, if they can initiate and pull all their ultimates off in, in you know, a key location. At the same time, uh, I think if Predator decides to go for something um, like a, a shrunken head here to combo in with his stone hide, that he will be a real force to be reckoned with. I yeah. know a lot of people might consider that to be a, a little bit. Um, uh, overkill, you know, to ha already have that magic immunity and the additional armor. But I mean, honestly, against a team like this, can you really have enough magic immunity? I don't think you can. I, th I think the big thing is also these battles don't just last for five seconds. They last longer. You need to actually keep it chained up there too. So uh, it, it, it is, it's definitely the best idea you could possibly have for him right now. We do actually have finally seen, we've seen, um, what was that? Our, our, I, I don't actually pronounce it correctly, but uh, basically, the replicate it is, of course, coming on through. It's, uh, now, Congo actually having a go. Is Predator really going to try this by himself? Um, Cannibal is actually coming out here. Druid's actually getting rid of those. Now they're going to move for the Congo. Are they going to be ready for this one? Tower has been pushed here. I've got a funny feeling that TSOG are going to let them take it. They're going to move themselves up on this top line, let them take that one, push it out. Congo is taking them a while to actually bring down. They're taking a lot of damage to do so too. Even if they want to TP towards the top, they actually bring this, uh, actually stop this push. They're not going to be able to do it. Congo is going down. Top tower is being pushed. Creep wave is gone. One, two, three, four heroes all up there on the top line. They are scrambling back now. They will finally bring down. Congo, or have they? They're still doing it. Now, finally, Congo takes the fall. So does the tier two tower up there on the top. And uh, even with that token of life now in the hands of the Hellborn side, I'm pretty sure TSOG are going to go. You know, that's that's a sacrifice worth making. Well, I mean, they they do have that that ability to keep a, a hero alive after one death, obviously. And, and the, the, so the token ends up going on to Predator. Uh, but at the same time, you, you really just have to kind of consider the fact that. Uh, this early in the game, a token, uh, I mean, obviously we're actually getting ready to approach the late game here, or, or, or near the late game as we're at the 35-minute yeah. mark, or 36-minute mark, sorry. Time, fl time flies when you're having fun, hey? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's like I said, at, at this point, um, the, the token probably not going to make or break the game. No. I mean, if, if they're able to, in fact, if they're, if they're able to, to steal that token away from Predator uh, by, by putting out a gank on him or something like that and completely negate its usefulness, I mean, that would be really awesome for, for TSG. And at the same time, uh, we're the, the, some of the levels on the Legion side are still low enough that if they're able to, uh, to pull off a team fight, and, and even if they lose further up in their lane, they'll definitely still be able to, uh, to you know, respawn and defend any kind of tower pushes that would happen. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's, it, you can't push in right now, and uh, I think map position is the only thing that they want to actually gain. It's what TS, TSG said they want to get before this one. They're coming in, and now, now even have a look. It's a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a draw Druids. Are they actually wanting to actually do that one? They're coming on through, and uh, well, I think they're thinking about putting the ward down there, but Glaze is assigned to actually fall back because they've actually found Chipper. Chipper's actually got caught here between Arachna, uh, between Predator, tried to drop the ulti, got the kill, but four heroes to actually bring down that Chipper, so they're still moving themselves around inside that Legion Neutrals, and uh, now, this is kind of half what we actually saw last time. The, the, the Hellborn pushed them back, because the Hellborn at that time were TSG, and TSG found themselves on the back defense. Valkolti now going off, hoping not to get some sort of initiation off here. Mouth is actually coming on down on the front lines. A very, very early actually coming off. They didn't actually get the sun off, and now they're finally coming on through. Demented Shaman will go down from this one. Mouth is still going off. The Black Hole has come off. They're holding them in place. The gla Glacier's holding the back of that too. Almost genocide. Valk's the only one left. There are multiples of them to choose from. In the end, they will find the real one, or will they actually not? No, the real one has fallen back there, but four heroes down. Big, big push. Great timing there. And, of course, the oldie from Tempest catching so, so many heroes. 
Well, I mean, that's what we were talking about there. We saw the we saw the attempted combo coming through from Pestilence, uh, especially with the, the Valkyrie ult being used right there. Unfortunately, a uh, really, really good reaction there from, from the team in order to move those heroes out to make sure that the Behemoth ultimate did not do nearly as much damage as it possibly could have. Uh, you know, actually... Um, Valkyrie, you know, she, she probably could have been a little more present in that team fight, but at the same time, you got to really hand it to Druids. They did an, an absolutely phenomenal job of making sure that uh, that they could get in there, complete that team fight, and at the same time, um, Loda did not use, did not lose that token. Yeah, he didn't lose that token. They he lives yet to yet to live another day. Would you believe? Uh, look, see that the the, the the defense on bottom. It held the tier three tower. It is very very low. So when the next push actually comes down, that one it will be very very concerning for them. Uh, but now counter push straight off the cup. They don't want to get caught on the back foot. They want to get themselves out. The three heroes chipper Valk behemoth. T the we've actually got pestilence. He's running in behind. He's, he's like he's like the run to the litter trying to catch up now. Valk takes out that crit wave. A bit of a call and then everything else. Is goes down. Shaman's still showing himself very, very quickly here. And look at the scrambling defense coming on back now. No one's down at the moment here. So uh, with Druid's boys just trying to get themselves up, ready to push on through. Tier 2 tower. Now the focus of the, Valk, the Valk who has popped off the Bane and wants to actually try and push it down. They do get the tower too. The, the Deny did try to come through, but not on, not on there as Predator jumps on through. Actually managed to actually bring down one of the TSG guys. Now they're focusing on the Pestilence. Pestilence in a lot, a lot of trouble. Even got, putting off the Impal. Getting near absolutely no one, but uh, Papa Dre going on down, pushing on the back, you know, he's leaping himself away, Shaman as well as Pestilence has gone down, and uh, well, actually, Chipper, he's TPing, is there a stun, can they stop it? No, they can't, he actually gets himself out of that one, everyone is around there, everyone uses it, as Behemoth goes on in, tries to actually pull off one kill there, but Predator, he's, uh, he was very, very close to death, in fact, he's still actually going on down there, but will actually survive, but Tempest, as well as, uh, as, well as our Glaze, is going on down that one, Behemoth ult just coming straight on in. Well, this game is it's still really difficult to call because, I mean, we do see that there is a massive experience in gold lead in favor of Druids right now. However, TSG, they're not letting it, you know, they're not really letting that get to them. They are doing their best to make these pushes on these Oh, towers. Arachna! Arachna caught out! Val caught it! Arachna was farming! Chipper came in and, uh, well, Arachna's got 75 seconds in the sin bin. What a big kill. Just a pulled out. What a gank. That's what you were hoping for on Predator before with the token of life. But in the end, it's Arachne going down. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, is there, there's, still, there's still four and a half minutes left on that token, you yeah. know, before, before it gets reclaimed by Congor. And, uh, you know, the, if they're able to make a successful push here in the middle lane to take out this, uh, this tower, looks like they're actually going to deny that this bottom tower finally, as uh, it had just received enough damage to, to be done so. Um, but, you know, if, if they're able to make a successful push and utilize, uh, maybe even use up, I mean, if they're able to keep that token through a tower push here at the middle lane, that would be phenomenal for Druids. But, I mean, they do have it still, so I'm looking for them to push this middle lane hard. Although, uh, they may end up actually just going for the bottom lane and going in straight for the racks now that that tower's been taken out. Uh, I, I don't know if they can do it though. Like you go, you go to drum. Like it's not the, just the fact the tower is there and you got to bring down the racks. Mm -hmm. You've also got to fight from the low to the high, and that's not an easy thing to do. It's literally you you have the upper advantage when you come on through. It's it's like Obi Wan Kenobi says to Anakin Skywalker at the end. Ah, oh, Obi Wan Kenobi doing a Star Wars quote. Um, I literally have the higher ground. You can't win this kind of jazz. Um, and it is possible. It is possible to still win. You can still push it on. They uh, do actually finally have their Arachna back now, and they're ready to push this tier two tower in the middle lane, firing off those rockets, giving it a bit of a mini stun on the back of Predator, also doing the damage and trying to take out this crit wave. Big Fissure on the back of it too. Predator tanking that tower. Now will finally fall back now. The token of life is still up and he still has so much life as well that bi the bonus life he'll actually get is... Um it's, it's hard to bring him down. He, he's a pain in the butt as it is, let alone actually having the token of life, life steal being a natural thing for him, and uh, just coming on through. Four heroes ready to push out this middle. Hellbringer, his ult is ready to go too, so the initiation is there if they want to do it. They're waiting for the right time. Tempest now building himself up, a little bit of an army of elementals, waiting for the right time, taking out those earth chocks, so they're on, they're on the receiving end of that one. So, TSG... It's not as though they've lost their focus. They're still, whenever a team battle comes around, they're ready to find out. Their options are just being very, very limited here by Druids. Yeah, actually, uh, Predator...
being played by Loda, he's actually now picking up a warp cleft, so doing his best to increase that attack speed, which is going to be uh, for a hero like Predator who has that innate uh, that innate ability to to have that life steal is just going to be something that's going to make him even harder to take down. So I would not be surprised to see him try to turn that into a demonic breastplate here and uh, really really increase the amount of DPS he's putting out. Yeah, that, they definitely will. Arrow flying out there, ho hoping, hoping, hoping doesn't actually hit anything bar a creep uh, because now you look at look at this battle. It's about to happen here on, on the bottom racks here of the Legion side. Predator's going to be the first one in. Try and make the most of it. Let him die early. Let him get himself back up because while this is happening, the top lane is still being pushed out by a Saint Legion wave. So they got they want to try to delay this one, but Malva's coming on down. They want to finish this early. Coming on down. Everything's hitting off. Now the oldie from Tempest is pulling everybody in. Lola picks up a double cap, t double tap onto it. Hattrick even coming off, pushing them all back. Valk leaped himself away. The oldie did come on down. Pestilence still making his move up here. He Valk trying to actually hide up there on the top tower. The quad kill comes off. Chipper, the only one left alive, doing whatever he can in these literally rocketing out here. They've got to bring down the racks. Once the, once the racks goes down, it's going to be very, very hard. If we do see TG actually come back from this one, it would be epic. But at the moment, they've just, with this bottom race going down, it's just like they've been kneecapped. Yeah, I, honestly, with the amount of items and the level advantage that they have here, I think it's all but over right now for this game as far as TSG is concerned. I mean, it's like you said, it would be absolutely phenomenal. It would, ha it would be a miracle of God if they were able to come <laughs> back and, and win this. I, I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's not going to happen. I'm just saying it's very, very unlikely. Um, you know, and, and TSG, actually we, we see that token of life finally being used on Predator as Chipper catches him with a couple rockets there. So now that the token's been used, I mean, but... It, I, it I has same, 30 seconds, It I has think. 30 <laughs> seconds left on it. I was going to say, uh, so Congor will be right back up, and you get, you know, you got to expect that with this bottom lane being pushed all the way in and already having uh, three or four heroes from Druids on that, that in that area, they're going to be looking to pick that Congor kill up once more and make yet another push to end this one. Yeah, it, it, it's just the way to go, and of course, at the moment, they, they control so much of the map. That's the biggest problem. Even if you, even if they start going for Congor, there's no way for the Legion side to really check that. They're just literally just like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to sit here on the side, and uh, I'm, think, I'm thinking about, are they going Congor? I'm not quite sure. Fire a rocket, that's probably going to be the only way they can get close enough to actually check it, without actually risking too, mu too much here. Val cleaning up this mid lane with Chipper in support. Pestilence coming up as well. Congor is now pinging up, though. I don't think he's actually up. No, he isn't actually up, up just yet. 45 minutes is on the clock. He'll have a little bit longer to wait before he does actually come up. Now the push, looking to come in. Val Alti going off. They're going to look for the initiation. They've found Predator, and is some Porky up here. They try and bring him down, but oh, he can't get the fissure off now the fissure finally goes off here the behemoth has been torn up here inside out they tried this gank it's not working for him pestilence will go down as well they're losing heroes up front they did claim tempest but now they'll also lose the demented shaman predator on the back he got to this point of the game he is beefed he is tanked he is killing absolutely everyone and they actually made it 4-2 killing off one more before it and now the mid push will come if they take this mid the GG will come out there is one hero once again left alive chipper is the only one. He's firing off these rockets to try and slow the advance here of the Hellborn side, and Hellbringer doesn't even care. He didn't have to use his ulti during that one. He's going to come in towards this middle lane, push it out here, and uh, Valk has actually respawned up now too. Papa Drac is now back up here, so it is now a 2v5 situation coming on into here, and uh, sorry, 2v4. Tempest still on the sidelines as well. They might hold them off. Papa Drake, he's, he's there. We'll see the call come down, and in the yes, yes they are. Then said, though, Congor's back up. They'll claim that one while the pieces are being picked up here by TSG. Yeah, taking a look at the levels here, I mean, some of the levels don't seem to be so messed up until you look, take a look at Predator and Arachna right now. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're both level 22, which is, you know, what is it? I'm looking at three or four levels higher than the highest level, which is that Valkyrie. The other problem is, here is that TSG, they don't have any true, true carry. I mean, they got Pestilence, who, when farmed correctly, can carry relatively well, but he is semi carry at the best. He's more of an initiator, ganker type hero. Um, you know, and he requires a ton of farm, similar to Predator, actually, uh, you know, if you want him to carry into the late game. However, they, they have Predator, who is a, a very hard carry slash initiator, and, and uh, that Arachnid 
Krishna has a, su a superb amount of farm on her as well. So there's, there's honestly, uh, I, I think TSG is delaying the inevitable here as yet again we see uh, Predator leaping in here. He's uh, being very, very ballsy. He's on a bloodbath right now, taking out that behemoth. He's going to actually get taken out here for his uh, the token of life, but that's going to respawn him. And he's going to come back with all abilities and all uh, full health and mana. Actually, he gets stunned relatively quickly. There's the, the Chipper Ultimate doing quite a bit of damage actually to him. And uh, there's a hat trick coming out from Ixu. There's the GG's coming out. We're going to see the vote to concede here. And uh, looks like Druid's going to be able to take this one away, forcing the game three. Guys, wow, Toby, what do you think about this game? And what do you think that TSG has to do to get back into it? TSG, like, they came up with a surprise the first time. They were aggressive. And Druids have just come back saying, you know, we can out-push you. You want to you wanna control our farm? We're going to control the lanes. Push it back with the Tempest picks. If TSG want to try and keep this sort of strat going, if they want to try and control the farm of Lord, if they want to try and actually control the farm of the entire team and the income of the entire team of Druids, they're going to have to somehow control the map. Get the, get, the, get the bands up there for the heroes, which can push back. Take out your heroes like Hellbringer. Take out your heroes like Tempest. But if you do that kind of stuff, then you open yourself up to a whole different can of worms. And uh, I don't actually know what they can do. That is, that is the big thing. Unless they just literally try and play a basic style of, of Hon game, if you do a dare say, and go for the Santa picks. Sure, be aggressive, but also do it very, very um, conservatively as well. It's the only, only thing really open up for them right now. But even then, them to Druids, if they can shut down Loader, we'll wait and see. If Druids try something different, we'll wait and see. These guys, they have a couple of minutes to think about what they're going to do, and then we'll come back here for the third game. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this game. I'm Phil from Honcast, and joining me was Toby Wan Kenobi of Gamesta. And we will be right back with you guys probably in about five to ten minutes mm -hmm. uh, when they start this next game up. So make sure you guys stay tuned here to Honcast.com because we're going to be bringing game three of the finals for uh, the Swedish tournament. The winner will be going to, I believe it's Shanghai, China. You are quite correct. Free trip. Free trip. Free trip. Big All tournament. right, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back.